Introductions to the Life and Adventures of Chanticleer the Intelligent Rooster, an interesting story in verse for children by an unknown author, translated by Louise Pollock, read for LibriVox.org by Lowell Moore, November the 16th, 2017, in Lake Helen, Florida. Introduction to the Little Ones Come, dear children, both great and small, I've something here twill please yon all. A little book where you may read of many a worthy and noble deed, and learn to make of Chanticleer a pattern for your conduct here. His good example when a child should make you all both brave and mild. I will tell you much that you'll like to hear of his studies and travels far and near, and what he has done and heard and seen in all the places he has been. When very small, his affectionate mother early taught him and his playmates to love one another, how his talents to use and his time to spend in virtue's ways till life should end, so that no sad, regretful sigh should mar his peace when he came to die. Now with his friends we'll follow him to his grave, and then we'll resolve to be as brave, and as good, and as generous as he, our lives from naughty acts as free. Now read this little book, my dear, and learn to be like Chanticleer. Introduction to the Adults To you who understand still better the spirit hid beneath this letter, you who with children have been blessed, to you these lines are now addressed. You know the parent's mission is to weed and prune with watchfulness as sleepless as the eye of time, each little sin, each germ of crime. I know how weighty is the part to train the garden of the heart, to plant the little plastic mind which heaven has to your charge consigned. With seed that shines on virtue's roll and blooms forever in the soul. In playful mood I have tried to teach and make our boosters conduct preach. Lessons of virtue, goodness, worth, to aid your holy task on earth. And pleased shall be if in your need I've helped to plant that heavenly seed that bears the palm in earthly strife and yields the fruit of endless life. Then speed you forth, my little book, to house and cot and hidden nook, where a child may be found to please and instruct, or forward and upward its steps to conduct. End of Introductions. This recording is in the public domain. Chapter 1 of The Life and Adventures of Chanticleer the Intelligent Rooster An Interesting Story in Verse for Children by an Unknown Author Translated by Louise Pollock Read for LibriVox.org by Lowell Moore, October 26, 2017, in Lake Helen, Florida. Chanticleer's Birthplace Not far from a fine village stood a farmer's house and land, on one side bounded by a wood of oaks and maples grand. Close by the barn a brook so clean ran, singing on its way, while in the barn there might be seen the cattle, sheep, and hay. But first of all the cottage neat we'll visit, and the inmates greet. 
Here we see the farmer, an industrious man, with his thrifty wife and their smart little son, the waiting maid and little Lizzie, and John, who is chopping wood so busy. The six, the family comprise, and all around looks neat and nice, as all of them we now have seen, and as you have good children been, we'll go to the ample barnyard now, and bid six six good morning to the cow, and view the oxen, sheep, and hens, the squealing pigs shut in their pens, the frisking calves that gaze and stare, frightened to see us enter there, but we do not mean them harm at all. Now let's give the stable a call. It contains a fine horse with a mule by his side, but they only use the horse when they take a ride. Take note of these lambs with snow-white fleece, these pretty pigeons and cackling geese. Now let us call the poultry round by scattering corn upon the ground. Here come the turkeys, who, with their noise, try to frighten little girls and boys. But like some people seen around, they're boasting loud, all ends in sound. See how red they are growing and angry? Because Robin, who also is hungry, takes his share of the food scattered round for their brood, but as they never were better taught, they will not do just as they ought. Each seeks his selfishness to feed, regardless of his neighbor's need. Such acts, though fitting them right, in you would be a sorry sight. Now come with me close to the pig pen to see the wee chicks of this guinea hen. Those bantams there are pretty too, but longer I cannot stay with you, but stop, we must certainly give a look to the peacock there, standing by the brook, with his handsome tail spread out so wide, basking in the sunshine of his pride. Just turn to greet Rover, whose kennel is there, and who over all of them feels watchful care. Now, somewhat acquainted you have become with the inmates of this pleasant home. Miss Biddy, among the rest, lived there, who was to be the mother of Chanticleer. End of poem. This reading is in the public domain. Chapter number two of the life and adventures of Chanticleer, the intelligent rooster, an interesting story in verse for children by unknown, translated by Louise Pollock, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Mrs. Biddy's Adventure with a Fox What sad work he made among the poultry winter had gone twas the beginning of spring when sweet little birds began to sing we had all bid good-bye to ice and snow the sun shone with a brighter glow and bade with its warmth the leaves to come forth the grass and sweet flowers it called into birth the hens began their eggs to lay, and crackled merrily all the day. One night, it was an oversight, the hen-house door was not shut tight. When every one was sound asleep, even Rover forgot safe watch to keep. And thus you can see, at a single glance, how it came that Mr. Fox had a fine chance to steal himself into the stable and carry off all he was able quick work he made in killing all who happened in his way to fall the biggest rooster with his seven sons 
the Shanghai hen with her twelve little ones, and six other hens he carried off, and met not with the slightest rebuff. As morning dawned, you can think what a fright was caused when discovered in what a sad plight Master Fox had contrived the hen roost to put, feathers here and there all covered with blood, five dead little chickens laid about the floor, which he left when he heard some noise near the door. It was no illusion, oh, what a confusion! The women screamed, the father swore, the children mourned their loss still more. The man and the servant girl, I need not say, how much they got scolded the whole blessed day. And all felt mad with the willy thief who had caused them all this trouble and grief. Had he been caught, tis not hard to guess, he would at once have been put to death. But what was the use of growing so mad? The damage was done, and though rather bad. Tis folly to blame and scold these creatures, who from God received their different natures. But hark, what moves there under the straw? Why, tis our pet hen, if ever I saw. You were fortunate indeed with your life to escape hid away so snugly it was done in good shape good morning good morning dear mrs biddy more pleased they felt than if they won a city the children ran to get her some food and praised her for being so wise and good of straw they brought the sweetest and best to build her the very nicest nest and her motherly qualities at once to test they placed twelve fresh eggs under her warm breast to sit on and raise them another brood to train and bring up to be useful and good whilst to john was given the task to supply her with food and drink three times a day every care they take of the afflicted mother left soul alone without husband or brother end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter three of the life and adventure of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Mrs. Biddy's Second Adventure with a Skunk She loses all her eggs but one, and finally receives assistance to protect her from her enemies. And now Mrs. Biddy sat, day and night, brooding over her eggs, so still and quiet she had almost forgot the fright and grief which the fox had caused that remorseful thief when she saw one night how through a small hole near the door a black-looking creature stole she had barely time to jump up and flee when he pounced on her nest twas a skunk you see who was going to treat himself to a feast and finding the hen gone thought he would at least have the eggs no sooner thought than done he quick went to work and carried off one to what place you would like to have learned it couldn't have been far for he soon returned another and another to carry away and i think i may safely venture to say that no doubt he would have had them all had Toppy not heard the poor hen's call, how relieved she felt to see her rushing in, and to see the skunk run to save his skin. Poor Mrs. Biddy even now hardly dared to return to her nest, she was so scared. 
you may imagine how sad she felt when but one egg in her nest she beheld yet to forsake this lone one she was too kind and just she went back once more to sit on her empty nest and quietly sat there till morning light revealed to the household the sorry sight oh what a hue and cry was made again once more to have such a loss to sustain and all were moved to see mrs biddy flap her wings so sadly twas a great pity with tearful eyes she begged them all to spare no pains in fastening the stall and look with care after every hole and crack to secure her against any future attack for in the next strife she might lose her life though many long nights i've watched o'er my nest and now believe me i need a little rest thus spoke poor mrs biddy and moved all hearts with pity End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chapter 4 of The Life and Adventures of Chanticleer, The Intelligent Rooster. An interesting story in verse for children by Unknown. Translated by Louise Pollock. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C chanticleer's birth then all went to work without further delay to secure the henhouse in every way every hole was fastened up with care they wished neither time nor labor to spare to give rest and comfort to the poor creature and keep all her foes at bay for the future now that the good hen's peace was secured she sat undisturbed till her check matured when the egg broke and it came to light how great was then the hen's delight to see her little chick so pretty and healthy gave her more bliss than to've been very wealthy no fault in her darling could she detect to the mother's fond eye her child was perfect twas pleasure to see it so lively and fat and yet so weak and delicate in place of a mouth it had a bill which it could open and close at will and quite astonishing it was she thought that a good appetite at once it brought on its little head twould have pleased you well to see there was hanging a bit of eggshell twas john again as before who told the new advent to the whole household and all of them ran to the henhouse a space to view with their own eyes the truth of the case and sure enough there was the little fellow his tiny feathers tipped brown and yellow they all saw his bill and his wings by his side his two little feet to walk with a stride a spur at his feet besides his four toes bright eyes to see with but not any nose tenderly loved biddy the wee little thing covering it gently under her warm wing so that it seemed as if it laid upon a nicely made-up bed and like all children loved to rest close to its loving mother's breast she lost all desire to go out and roam like all tender mothers she stayed at home to take the best care of her little pet and keep watch that none should hurt him or fret while she carefully selected all his food and gave him only what was healthy and good end of poem this recording is in the public domain Chapter 5 of The Life and Adventures of Chanticleer, The Intelligent Rooster, An Interesting Story and Verse for Children by Unknown, translated by Louise Pollock, read for LibriVox.org by Karen Malazzi, October 31st, 2017, Massachusetts. 
Chapter 5. Mrs. Biddy has a grand party to celebrate the occasion of naming her child. As now the chicken was growing older, increasing in size, it also grew bolder. Yet its mother kept close by its side, its inexperienced footsteps to guide. The cunning little doll was so pretty a sight, that to see it every one took much delight, and the neighbor's fowls often flew over the wall to make Mother Biddy a friendly call, though over a high fence to climb they had. Pleased with the chicken was even the cat, the turkeys too, the geese and the dog, the ox and the horse, the mule and the hog. And Biddy, when she saw how everyone took such an interest in her little son, thought no time nor labor she would spare to bring him up with the greatest care. He shall be well educated and learned till the name of being a wise rooster he's earned. Yes, he shall even to college go to learn there all there is to know. And now my child must have a name. The best way for reaching this aim will be to invite all my friends, and at least a few strangers too, to give them a feast in celebration of the occasion, when two of them shall choose a name. I will endeavor, as far as I am able, to place before them a well-spread table. The news quickly spread, and it was amusing to see them flock in, leaving no time for choosing. Many robins and swallows flew down from the trees. The ducks soon followed suit, as also the geese. The doves left their pigeon house, one and all. The turkeys and fowls, too, answered the call. Of blackbirds and martins there were some. The peacock even thought fit to come. Whilst, lo, there comes, with slow and measured step, the proud gold pheasant neighbor, Jusette. Mrs. Biddy gave all a pleasant greeting, and hoped they would all enjoy their meeting. Then she gave each at her table a seat, and placed before them to drink and to eat, just as much as they wanted of the nice fare, which she had prepared with great skill and care. The yard, house, and cellar had yielded their store, till on the table there was room for no more. All had brought along a good appetite, and every one of them seemed satisfied. When right in the height of their enjoyment, Biddy arose and bowed to all present. Gracefully lifting up one of her feet, she thus began her company to greet. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all aware that when to the family is born an heir, it has always been an honored custom to invite all one's friends to come, without regard to their name or station, to grace with their presence the joyful occasion of choosing for the child a name. And shouldn't I do the very same by my child, my only one, you know? And there was not one who would say no, for all agreed with her on the point. You think as I do, she then rejoined. I therefore, without further delay, will proceed with what I have to say. For Godfather, Mr. Peacock, I choose, and Godmother shall be my friend, Mrs. Goose. If you are pleased to accept the same, please to choose for my dear child a name. As soon as Mrs. Biddy had retaken her chair, Mr. Peacock arose with a dignified air, spreading out his tail with great parade. He walked up to Mother Goose and said, Mrs. Biddy has asked us a name to choose for her dear child, and I'll not refuse if you also think best to fulfill her request. She consented, and both walked up to where the hostess was sitting in her chair, and bowing with due reverence, he thanked her for her preference and said, on a name we'll agree without much ado. We'll name him Chanticleer, if it pleases you. It was his father's name, and if I remember right, that of his grandsire, too. Then, hurrah, they all cried. Then they kissed the child and retreated to the place where they had been seated. And Chanticleer he was called by all of those who knew him, both great and small. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chapter number six of the life and adventures of Chanticleer, the intelligent rooster, an interesting story in verse for children by unknown, translated by Louise Pollock, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Chanticleer's childhood, his first disobedience and punishment. And now Mother Biddy in earnest begun to direct and instruct her dear little son what to choose for his drink, where to find his food, and early to distinguish the bad from the good, how far he might run and where to abide, whom to mistrust and in whom to confide. 
she led him through the barn and the yard all over and they went to the meadow all covered with clover but you may depend that she never was found in the garden or upon the cultivated ground and some mischievous hens would do but miss biddy much better knew she carefully taught his youthful mind to keep from evil of every kind but one day when the hen wasn't near to prevent it young chanticleer felt himself very much tempted to steal into the garden of a neighbor and eat of the fruit raised with much labor of currants he ate the ripest and best but feeling guilty he ate in such haste that he couldn't enjoy his naughty trick a man too came after him with a stick who tried pretty hard to fell him down twas the deacon in his long dressing gown and no doubt chanticleer would have been dead had he been hit on his wayward little head when at last he reached home quite trembling with fright his mother saw quickly that all was not right and concluded that to keep him from doing wrong again to make him obedient she must give him some pain so she took a rod and held him by the wing and gave her naughty child a severe whipping he sobbed and cried loud and long though he felt twas just for he'd done wrong children should always be made to mind to keep them from evil of every kind end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter seven of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer learns to read come here my child said mother hen one day to chanticleer when he came in from play tis time now to begin to think of something besides play food and drink a child who smart desires to be must early learn his a b c the vowels a e i o u and all the other letters too then when you know them well you will learn how to spell therefore i have brought for you this book into which i hope you will often look now come at once and repeat after me slowly and attentive your a b c quickly you'll learn them all by heart soon to spell you'll begin if you are smart and i promise that when to read you begin you shall have books with pretty stories within then she pointed to the letters and pronounced them with care and made her little chanticleer speak them after her it was rather hard work for him but still he went at his letters with determined will and grateful for his mother's pains he tried to make her entirely satisfied yet at first he thought he hated to study and only through love for his dear mother biddy he persevered without being much admonished and by his progress all were much astonished for soon he knew all his letters so well that now he'd begun to learn how to spell and if he'd been diligent before he now applied himself still more great interest and pleasure now he took in the study of his reading book for now he was able to read pretty tales all about elephants lions and whales 
about bees who make delicious honey about a man who do anything for money about good little charlie and careless dick about the sly fox who played the farmer a trick about the tall giraffe and the striped zebra and about the negroes of africa and every story no sooner read so fast he'd pronounce it better than the last and i know you'll be glad to have it said that chanticleer reflected upon all he read and when anything didn't seem quite clear he'd inquire the meaning of his mother dear and thus by reading and close observation he gained more knowledge than others in his station he knew a great deal and could tell you at once the names of several kinds of plants of trees and flowers of grains and fruit and knew for what purpose they were good he read about fishes and birds in the air about the snail who drags her house after her about oceans and ships and shells on the shore and about many different objects more end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter eight of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent brewster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c what he learns and observes during his walks with his mamma and what with reading and observing nature he grew in knowledge as well as in stature and as might be expected from a good loving child he was always quick to mind obliging and mild this filled the mother's heart with pleasure who sought to please him by spending her leisure in taking him frequently out to walk to breathe the fresh air and have a nice talk when thus engaged in pleasant conversation she took pains to direct his observation to the many blessings all around with which god made this earth abound the stately oak with the tiny acorn the million of insects which are daily born the luscious berries and juicy fruit many herbs which are for sickness good the water in the brook as clear as glass the nourishing grains the velvety grass the bird in the air who so sweetly sings all this they admired and many more things and often they'd see the cow enjoying her feed in the rich meadow and felt sorry that she did not spare the pretty flowers that were there then in summer during the noonday heat they would to the shady woods retreat and at other times she take her little one into the garden to see the setting sun as it tinged the sky with a crimson light and chanticleer thought twas a splendid sight when going home they would stop on their way to admire the flower beds so gay roses and peonies with evening dew bright pinks gilly flowers and ladies delight chanticleer enjoyed very much all he saw and often would say thank you dear mamma for taking me out to walk with thee and showing such lovely sights to me end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter nine of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer's complaint to
to his mother about the evils which he observes all about him his mother's advice quite different sights met chanticleer's eye when playing in the yard close by here he saw the robin forever stealing cherries there some roosters were picking the ripe berries though often they had been driven away they wanted to have their share they would say the crow would pull up the corn which the farmer just now had sown sweet little birds innocent and gay were killed by the cat their enemy at poor old men often barked the dog to wallow in dirt delighted the hog when the bull came home at the close of the day every one would run out of the fellow's way to get some chickens the hawk would strive though they never had harmed them in their life to see the turkeys fight made him also feel quite sad when they tried to get away what another one had he often complained to his mamma of the evils which he daily saw my child good miss biddy says do you not follow their bad ways bad habits and vice you must ever hate only what good you may see you must imitate a good child had much rather be clean and neat than to soil his clothes or muddy his feet he never must love to give pain without need to any of god's creatures whom he chances to meet a good child does not tease nor fight my son nor ever scratches the face of any one he does not call bad names nor is on mischief bent but is ever obliging and reverent he does not contradict what is said to him nor pout when not gratified in every whim be kind to all and respect even the poor for these are virtues which will ever endure be slow to judge but ready to be kind and especially always quick to mind end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter ten of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer learns to write and addresses a letter to his mother Today we must learn some new lesson my dear mrs biddy said one morning to chanticleer and that you may learn how to write just look i have brought you this pencil and writing book to learn how to write is the next step to take if in learning you wish much progress to make straight marks for the beginning will do next follow letters and numbers too i know every day you will like it better how pleased you will be when you can write a letter now take the pencil and hold it in this way let us make a fair beginning to-day be careful to make these marks as i do and to-morrow you shall make m n and u chanticleer did as he was bid and daily at his desk would sit and though at first his marks were not quite straight soon one could see that good progress he made just six months from the time that he first begun on his mother's birthday this dutiful son sat down and wrote on a beautiful sheet a composition for his mother to read dear mother whom i love so well i am more happy than i can tell to be able on your birthday to wish you much joy forgive if i have not always been a good boy and i will try to grow better every day to prove my love 
this will be the best way please continue to love my mother dear thy true and affectionate chanticleer to be sure this might have been written much better but his mother thought it was a beautiful letter her eyes were suffused with tears of joy to think that she had such an affectionate boy she thought he fully rewarded her for all her solicitude and care end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter eleven of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c his youth he learns how to draw his fruitless efforts to learn how to sing now that chanticleer knew how to write and read his mother brought all the utensils he'd need to learn how to draw first upon the slate and as he soon very good pictures made she gave him paper pencil and even a board the use of which he yet ignored but little teaching was sufficient to make him in drawing proficient then a paint-box was given him a perfect treasure and his paintings gave universal pleasure next mrs biddy thought what a nice thing it would be to have him learn how to sing but whom was she for a teacher to get this difficulty had to be settled yet so she went out and invited all the inmates of the yard to call that she might hear each one's voice and from among them make a choice they all came their best efforts to lend each hoping to satisfy their friend first the turkey began followed by the peacock after him a rooster a goose and a duck then the pig grunted the mule did bray after that the oxen had their say the kitty mewed and purred her best then the dog barked with commendable zest and each thought that they were doing remarkably well but which was the worst it would be hard to tell now each had been heard and the dove who cooed but none of them would mrs biddy suit and earnestly upon her object bent out into the fields and forests she went but at first all her efforts seemed to fail till at last she found a nightingale who accepted her office as teacher with pleasure and taught chanticleer all about sound and measure she tried her best and spared no pain to teach him to sing but all in vain the notes were written on paper with skill but all he could do was to open his bill and squawk out dolefully coo 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 which twas plain was all that he could ever do i thank you for your trouble mrs biddy said i fear for your trouble you are hardly paid but it's useless for him any more lessons to take for i'm sure a singer he never make perhaps he may at some future day learn upon some instrument to play end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter twelve of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer studies arithmetic not long after this mrs biddy began to say to her little rooster man we have reached thus far with your education 
and now we'll take a look at calculation for if in usefulness you desire to abound it is needful that you know how to count come then and sit down beside me and count attentively one two three four five six seven eight nine ten of that number what have you ever seen i have seen ten fingers on the hands of men and toes at their feet there are also ten that is right now can you tell me how much are one and two that's three he replied you are right again and two from four there two remain you are doing well my child she said now mark that two times four makes eight add two to this how much is it then and chanticleer said it must be ten how much are two and ten can you tell me i think it must make twelve said he right again and twelve is a number which is called a dozen you must remember when we count knives forks or tablecloths napkins handkerchiefs or hose twelve months there are in every year do not forget this chanticleer how much is six times two now can you tell it is twelve i think you have answered well add two now to twelve tis easy to be seen yes he replied that makes fourteen by this you can see how very quick he was in learning arithmetic end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter thirteen of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer saves a little bird from drowning and courageously comes to a chicken's rescue while thus employed in learning daily something new to quite a large and intelligent rooster he grew the spurs at his feet were beginning to show and on his head a respectable cone did grow the feathers of his coat and all his tail also shone brightly with all the colors of the rainbow in seeing him all the neighbors took delight especially when in the bright sunlight to be admired so much it would not have been very astonishing if he had grown vain but he did not to his honor be it said with all that so much homage to him was paid his bearing was modest though he walked erect uniting humility to a proper self-respect and once when out walking with his dear mamma on approaching the brook young chanticleer saw a little bird which by some chance had fallen in and no doubt would have drowned had it not been seen by our young friend who instantly flew to the poor little bird's timely rescue drew him out of the water and laid him down then carefully wiped his dripping gown very soon the warm sun had made it quite dry then its mother who had now approached near by cried out thank you for being so kind and brave now in return your life i'll try to save go away as quick as you can from here for i know that a crafty fox is near thus every kind word or good action spent will surely find its reward in the end on another occasion topsy the cat though apparently no evil thought she had by the fence of the garden was stealing by not aware that upon her was fastened his eye she suddenly gave a spring quite bold and upon a chicken 
fastened hold hoping to regale herself no doubt but she was mistaken she soon found out for chanticleer at once flew upon her neck and vigorous began her head to peck and loudly called the neighbors to assist in case that topsy should attempt to resist but she was so frightened that very quick she dropped the trembling bleeding chick and not daring to give them time to think she escaped from the spot as quick as a wink then they all surrounded him and in many ways expressed to him their approbation and praise but chanticleer told them that he thought he'd only done what any one ought not to do any wrong requires strong will but to prevent evil is better still end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter fourteen of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer's youth he goes to college and applies himself well to his studies the doctor advises him not to study so hard and to be moderate in all things the lovely summer season has passed away and the storms of winter were having their sway when during one cool and frosty day we heard our young friend chanticleer say now mother i'm strong and old enough too to start on a journey the world to view when snow and ice are melting and spring comes forth i shall leave for a while your maternal hearth as many others have done before me i shall not consent to this step said she my wish which i trust you will not discard is that next spring you go to old harvard and learn there all you possibly can when you come home you may pursue your plan accordingly to old cambridge he went and over his studies all his energies bent i should really have liked to have had you come and see the big books which he studied from he enjoyed it better to study and think than he did to walk out or to eat or drink he read and wrote and wrote and read so much that the doctor to him said my young man allow me to scold you some you were fat and stout when you left your home and now your countenance looks wan and thin you study too much that is plain to be seen now heed my advice and study less and you will be more sure of success to be sure whilst often ten out of eleven to their books and studies have to be driven yet to do too much of the very best thing never fails a deal of mischief to bring to sit too many hours or too much thinking to eat immoderately or too much drinking to waste one's time by too much sleep or study too much or too late hours keep too much boasting as well as too much pride or too much desire one's merits to hide too often to borrow or too often to lend all these one must beware of my young friend for tis best on every occasion to use a proper moderation still you are deserving of much praise my lad that you do not follow the example so bad of those who love horses wine and lager beer better than the books which to study they came here squandering their money and time without measure spending in useless pursuits all their leisure 
to succeed in the world the very best way is to use moderation faith and energy end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter 15 of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer starts on a journey he is taken sick in new orleans and writes a letter to his mother the end of the college term has come and chanticleer now was returning home mrs biddy was pleased to see him and then was willing to have him his journey begin his valise was soon packed it was a glorious thing he thought when he started one fine day in spring the various scenes he viewed with delight the sky so serene and the sun so bright and at times when a fine stream or mountain he'd see you could have seen him for joy jump as high as a tree he enjoyed it so much to travel and roam that he did not once think of returning home but at last his money was much in decrease and in new orleans he was prostrated by disease just as soon as he grew a little better he wrote to his mother a pitiful letter my very dear mother he wrote what will you say when you learn that i've been sick three weeks to a day i'm quite low with a fever and my money is all gone and poor nursing and care do i get here alone very often i think as on my straw i lie here for my desire to travel i am paying pretty dear yet i must confess that though now in a sad plight many lovely scenes i have viewed with delight i have climbed up mountains and sailed on a lake and would have crossed the ocean were it not for your sake did you know that telegraph wires are now in use which carry with lightning speed messages and news instead of travelling by stages and team the wagons and freight are now carried by steam ships also need no longer the wind to heed for they now go by steam at much greater speed many other improvements have been made also for instance a machine which can plough and hoe and i wish you had one which really can sew but alas these nice things are only sold to the ones whose pockets are filled with gold and as you know this isn't the case with me we must learn without them contended to be everywhere much glitter and fashion i see yet all this does not hide the great misery in which many are living and dying every day and which to alleviate there ought to be a way and now i will bid you an affectionate good-bye and trust that to send me some money you'll try that as soon as possible i may get away from here whilst meanwhile i remain your affectionate chanticleer end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter sixteen of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer returns home he relates his adventures mr gander is impudent 
and is reproved a year had now almost passed away since our hero started on his way and though in travelling he much pleasure found his steps were most joyous when homeward bound and when the old homestead to his view had come he crowed out in gladness there's no place like home he reached there at last and all were glad to see that he had grown from a fair young lad to a sunburnt young man tall and erect possessed of much knowledge and self-respect his mother was delighted above the rest to press him once more to her motherly breast how glad i am she said to see you again now the rest of my days with me you'll remain how brown you are and how you've grown tall now tell us of your adventures all and a good many hours now daily he spends as around him are gathered his neighbors and friends to tell of many lovely places seen where during his travels he had been to the white mountains he had been tempted to go where in midsummer the hilltops are clad with snow while the valleys with verdure were all aglow in new york he had found the most fashion and show the views on the hudson were very fine this river is oft called the american rhine he saw west point where boys learn to fight to defend their country and their right the western states he visited too where wheat and corn in plenty grew i had a chance to see the prairies in the states of wisconsin and illinois the valley of the mississippi too is a fine country to travel through the climate suited me so well i would have stayed there a longer spell had it not been for the want of means that i had to quit those lovely scenes in too much haste to suit my taste but you must know that i soon found out that to enjoy travelling about to go sight-seeing and pay hotel fare requires a full purse everywhere the next best thing is to be polite and ever do what you know to be right good manners abroad or at home gain friends wherever you roam thus many an hour was passed away in pleasant converse every day and all the neighbors round about accepted his word without a doubt but once when mentioning a steamboat explosion mr gander conceived the silly notion to contradict him to his face and say i believe to use big words is the way with the fast young men of our day but chanticleer said my good sir nay allow me to tell you with due respect that anything different we cannot expect from one who always remains at home who beyond his yard never wishes to roam one who hates his school and a book reads never remains a gander for ever and ever then they all laughed and called him smart though gander thought twas rather tart end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter seventeen of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c mrs biddy's death chanticleer's marriage he is a dutiful husband and father some time after this mrs biddy grew ill 
and died very soon after making her will her loss was felt by many a friend to whom she had never refused to lend to every one she had been friendly and kind and many a good deed she left behind though now quite a man was chanticleer the geese would call him little even this year but this did not fit him any more at all but rather mr cockerel now lord of the stall he felt rather lonesome now his mother was gone so he thought he no longer would remain alone and improving the very first chance he called upon his owner at once dear sir he said to you i have come to ask for a wife to grace my home to greater bliss i do not aspire be pleased to gratify my humble desire the man replied tis a pleasure to me instead of one to give you three chanticleer thanked him with due respect and felt as pleased as one might expect his home now was as cheerful as when his mother kept house that excellent hen his happiness now seemed without alloy his good hen society gave him much joy he was always attentive and kind to them but whenever some strange dandy in his yard came his family to tease and disturb the peace he never failed in sending him home with repenting heart and bleeding comb as a good husband he never took pride to keep the wants of his household supplied whilst his faithful wives with equal zest kept laying their eggs in their cosy nest and soon he had the pleasure to be father to quite a large family and often in their midst was he seen with watchful looks and tender mien early he began to instruct them all and taught them to mind the very first call and never neglected his acknowledged right to waken them all at the first dawn of light when the weather was going to change he knew and always acknowledged it with cock-a-doodle-doo good order reigned in his household nor did he ever coax or scold was danger near he would sound the alarm and thus keep them all from attack or harm all helped earn their food and forbidden was theft but the best morsels were always for little ones left thus he well earned the desirable name of a wise rooster whenever he came end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter eighteen of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c two adventures with mr fox whose schemes are defeated mr fox soon heard a report of all this and thought by himself twas not to be amiss to make upon them a friendly call and gain an entrance to this rooster's stall then wouldn't he have a nice time of it and forthwith he set to work his wit and as soon as he his plans had laid he knocked one night at the door and said kind mr rooster open i pray your door to me for i've lost my way i am a poor orphan child and people call me good and mild i have no friend in the wide wide world and oh i am so hungry and cold but it was not easy our rooster to cheat he felt at once that it was all deceit so he called out to the wily loafer just go and knock at the door of rover 
He'll open the door at once to you." Then loudly he crowed his cock a doodle do. This quickly brought Rover, who came to see What at this time of night the matter could be. But when he got there, he saw with grief That he had come too late to catch the thief. He made chase after Reynard, but without avail, Yet succeeded to bite off a piece of his tail, Whilst Foxy was squeezing through a hole in the wall, With empty stomach, and narrow escape withal. A good warning to him this lesson might seem, Still he would not renounce his cherished scheme, But taking fresh courage, he went once more, to knock one night again at the door. Open to me quickly, cried out the liar. The village and your homestead are on fire. I'm much obliged to you, my dear, replied our cautious Chanticleer. Your kind help I'll not refuse, nor your readiness abuse. But I'll open to you at once, he said to the conceited dunce. However, he thought best not to grant the request, but opened a certain door, which Mr. Fox had not looked for. Quickly he put his paw in, when, lo, the clap of the door made him feel that it was a trap. Now piteously for mercy he cried, and to move Chanticleer's heart he tried. But when he saw all hope was past, by a powerful effort he got free at last, but not without pulling with all his might, and tearing off one paw which served him right. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chapter 19 of The Life and Adventures of Chanticleer, The Intelligent Rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a naughty child sad consequences of his wilfulness thus cautious and wise was chanticleer a bright example to far and near and his little children behaved so well, there could scarce be found a parallel. Only one there was among them all, though yet quite young and very small, who always wanted his own way, and would have the last word to say. His little tongue he could not bridle. When all were busy, he would be idle of everything nice he'd have the best share his father saw this with displeasure and though he ascribed it in a measure to his having been petted when he was ill he began to correct this stubborn will he spoke to him again and again but all his efforts were in vain then his father said i'm sorry for you for selfish will be punished, I know. And, to be sure, not many weeks after this, he ate too many currants and gooseberries. In consequence of this naughty trick, he was taken very sick. The doctor to restore him tried, but without success, he grew worse and died. This made them all feel very bad. Indeed, his father felt so sad that really quite thin he grew and at last he was taken sick too this gave the family very much pain and they hoped he would soon be well again he carefully followed the doctor's advice took his medicines though they did not taste very nice the news of his illness was soon spread all over the village and many said that he would follow his son to the grave but providence thought best his life to save the doctor held with others counsel and shortly after our hero got well 
and all were pleased once more to behold him resuming his duties as of old thus a naughty child on mischief bent brings trouble and pain to his parent to the world he now was longer spared and as before he always cared that peace and order at home should reign much love and respect he thus did gain his children now were growing tall yet still obeyed his wish or call jersey blue bosom shanghai and dames these were the four eldest daughters names while the names of the four oldest boys were lord bolton dick cocklem and chanticleer end of poem this recording is in the public domain chapter twenty of the life and adventures of chanticleer the intelligent rooster an interesting story in verse for children by unknown translated by louise pollock read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chanticleer and his family flee from the village at the approach of soldiers who threaten to take their lives they direct their steps to cambridge one day the neighbors all around were startled by an unusual sound like of approaching troops the hum of tramping men with fife and drum yes surely they were soldiers with muskets on their shoulders every one in the village was then scared they did not know that war was declared they were going to take the place i suppose and woe to the one who tried to oppose already they were for fighting and killing but thought with poultry to make a beginning for besides their swords and desire to fight they brought with them a good appetite and one zoave whom they all feared because he had such a long beard with sword in hand looked all around to see where chanticleer was to be found but like a wise father at the first alarm he taken his brood out of the way of harm to a close thicket in the neighborhood where however was but little food it is of no use the danger to hide which now surrounds us on every side said chanticleer with a serious brow and i think the best way to do now is for the older children to travel abroad the first few days keep on the back road the little ones must remain in my care and my fortunes they shall freely share in cambridge i've a valued friend to seek him out i now intend he was a noble generous youth scorning meanness loving truth he will a cordial hand extend and kindly welcome an old friend so when the day expires in night we'll quietly begin our flight end of poem this recording is in the public domain Chapter Twenty One of the Life and Adventures of Chanticleer, the Intelligent Rooster, an interesting story in verse for children by unknown, translated by Louise Pollock, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Slowly and sadly passed the day, till evening came with shadows gray then at the rising of the moon the older children one by one came of their father leave to take weeping as if their hearts would break but he bade them dry their tears and let their courage quell their fears he hoped that many things they'd learn to talk of when they should return 
Then kissing them a fond good night, He told them to prepare for flight. They bade adieu and chanticleer Awoke the little ones so dear, And with a heavy heart within The cheerless journey they begin. Their timid feelings, mixed with fear, Kept them close to chanticleer, And non they heard a wrestling sound. Twas but the huntsman and his hound beating the brush to find some game then a carriage rumbled came striking on the startled ear awaking every sense of fear the whistling cars they also heard which every pulse of wonder stirred once in their way there seemed to stand a giant with an outstretched hand when they approached twas found to be a dry and withered willow tree soon all were glad to greet the day then idle fears they laughed away when the sun did bright ascend it put to every fear an end his rays dispersed all thoughts of sadness and filled each little heart with gladness the lark ascended high in air and warbled there his morning prayer and farmers hurried to the fields to plant the fruit that nature yields whoever hath risen at early morn late in his bed to lie will scorn so sweet the breath of perfumes rare that float about in the morning air the family still kept marching on each hour a greater distance won their food they gathered on the way and did not rest their feet nor play but ere the second day had passed one little chick grew lame so fast that chanticleer with clever tact lifted the wee one on his back and then proceeded on the way till near the closing of the day when in the distance they decried a smoke a church spire and beside they saw upon the distant hill the ancient college standing still said chanticleer with gay delight there's cambridge where we'll rest to-night a friendly person in the street guided their worn and weary feet to where he said his friend did dwell then chanticleer pulled at the bell the door for them was open wide and gladly each one stepped inside the friend delighted seemed to be good chanticleer's bright face to see he bade them welcome to his home and all were glad that they had come you see we live quite plainly here said william then to chanticleer though poor the fare by which we live we ne'er forget our thanks to give to the father above who listens in love and bids us be kind to the poor we find at morning's dawn we all arise we've learned the morning hours to prize coffee and tea we do not make to quench our thirst pure water take and in some quite secluded nook we often bathe in the sunny brook we come out fresh for cheerful labors in which we're joined by our neighbors when we have finished the work of day and at night our weary limbs we lay on our rude and simple cot down and feathers are all forgot whose labors well can sleep with ease without the slightest aid from these and can be sure of quiet rest if only with clear conscience blessed gladly they accepted his invitation hoping to return it on some occasion.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chapter 22 of The Life and Adventures of Chanticleer, The Intelligent Rooster. An interesting story in verse for children by unknown. Translated by Louise Pollock. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. One day, when they were in the street, where they had gone a friend to meet, they heard a noise of fife and drum, and wondered what to town had come, and everybody ran to see the wondrous things that there might be. A shaggy bear from far away, with him they saw a camel gray, larger than horses on the road, and on his back a monkey strode, a comic cap above his nose. He jumped and grinned, turned somerset, looking round for what he could get. An organ grinder took the stand, and the monkey started, cap in hand, to ask for gifts with a knowing wink, as much to say, you'll give, I think. And often to his happy lot, there fell an apple or a nut. Then the man gave a stick to the bear, which he took with a very knowing air, and began to perform with right good will, with a martial air and the soldier's drill. And all cried out, Oh dear, how tame! But just then another noise came to bring to a sad and sudden end their pleasure which seemed so innocent. It was the enemy, as before, who'd come to frighten them once more, with cannons and horses and dreadful band, who they feared would desolate the land, for everywhere the fear of war frightens people wherever they are. And at all times those have had a bad name, who made fighting their object and aim. Yet sometimes, for a noble cause, arms must be taken even by those who are friends of quiet and of peace, but liberty love more than ease. This, of course, Chanticleer didn't understand, so he took his little ones by the hand and hid with them far out of the way. You see, dear children, we then heard him say, that even while beasts can be tamed by men, for all creation is mastered by them, yet when revengeful passions in men's bosoms dwell, they convert this fair earth into a hell. Worse than the wild bear in the wood, man kills his brother in angry mood. Let's turn our steps towards our old home, since the soldiers now this way have come. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chapter 23 of The Life and Adventures of Chanticleer, The Intelligent Rooster, an interesting story in verse for children by unknown, translated by Louise Pollock, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When the journey was made, they all felt glad to find that the others return had to the old homestead where all was quiet which filled them all with great delight it was indeed a pleasing sight to see them all once more unite each their adventures to recount then all went off to sleep quite sound and bright in the morning they began once more to go on the same as they'd done before 
the oldest daughters got married now the sons too took the marriage vow and in their turn had children soon who quickly learned to walk alone still chanticleer felt right smart and hale though grandpa now throughout the vale and often he would enjoy to be surrounded by his great family telling them stories of days past and gone and of his travels which he'd made all alone and many lessons useful and kind he imparted to their useful mind every one should try he once said to all to fill a place on earth and though it be small no drones should be allowed to be members of your great family money will not always ensure what one most needs and what will endure as kindness esteem or intelligence which are worth more than shillings or pence each individual has from heaven for his use different talents given to work with his head one best understands another finds it easier to work with his hands the carpenter builds a house with the plan which the skilful architect has drawn then the plasterer and painter must do their share the upholsterer will next be needed there to make and furnish table and couch and put up all the finishing touch then many others must also come to add comfort to a pleasant home thus is it with ships and everything else many hands are needed more than wealth if ever you'd succeed in an enterprise you must unite with the skillful and the wise and each must do what he best knows how whether it be to teach a school or milk a cow study economy save time and strength measure beforehand the cable's length if you undertake to lay it tis always safest first to weigh it rise early and waste no time in slumber and union is strength ever remember another fine virtue is honesty with determination and industry then persevere and with patient toil you'll raise a crop from the poorest soil be not content to work for your gain alone but make others interest your own and always think for others to do as you wish that they would do it for you and every one love to hear and listen to old chanticleer and though his eyes to fail began his hearing too was on the wane yet his advice was as good as ever and was sought by all the good and clever the children would often leave their playmates to bring to grandpa their books or slates to read to him or hear him verses recite or beg for a story in the pleasant twilight yet twas quite plain to be seen that he was getting old and infirm to be his step was feeble and tremendous his song and all felt that he would leave them ere long they praised him the more and couldn't do enough to make him forget his troublesome cough he often was touched by their tender care and then would say a little longer forbear with your old sire while i dwell with you i know that rich blessings are your due may you find your reward is my greatest wish for your love so devoted and unselfish end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Chapter Twenty Four of the Life and Adventures of Chanticleer, the Intelligent Rooster, an interesting story in verse for children by unknown, translated by Louise Pollock, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. One night, twas in the pleasant autumn he bade all his grandchildren to come and said to them in a pleasant mood as they all around him quietly stood i own a precious diamond clear i kept for the one who'd be most dear but to me you are all alike dear therefore the one who from among you here to-day the best of deeds has done shall have my diamond for his own then arose one pretty little one all day i tried to be good he began i have prayed and studied and wrote and read and minded every word that mamma has said but this i know is nothing to boast of to do one's duty is hardly enough a second one then jumped on his feet and said to-day i ate too much fat meat it made me more sick than ever i had been so i asked mother for some medicine though i hate it for tis bitter as gall but i know twould relieve me and that was all a third then got up and said my mother bade me to take care of my little brother and during her absence with him to stay soon after my schoolmates wanted me to play with them in the street and let baby weep till he could have cried himself to sleep but i wouldn't follow their naughty whim but rather remain alone with him another was scolded said the fourth one this morning for what i myself had done though there were none the contrary to prove i thought twould be shameful to stand aloof the innocent i would not let suffer for me i own myself guilty that he might be free though i knew i shouldn't have been detected yet twas no more than could be expected a nice little chick then got up and said i saw a little child who i was afraid would take cold this cool morning for it sat where the wind blew hard and twas thinly clad i took off my coat and put it on her the boys all laughed at me but i didn't care this morning early a six one told i found a beautiful piece of gold i searched for the owner who had lost it and gave it to him tis no great merit the seventh one spoke with modesty i was punished to-day severely because for my sister i wished to bear the punishment which was due to her for it was she who spilled the milk on the floor when she stumbled over the sill of the door but i'm sure i don't deserve any praise for she's often kind to me in many ways an older one said my supper last night i gave to a poor little girl who cried with hunger and with cold and fear i ran to my home which was quite near and got my supper and returned to where she was standing then gave it to her i was glad to see it taste so good just think that day she tasted no food it was no great privation to me i hardly knew what it is hungry to be you are all good children said chanticleer yet kind yet modest you don't wish to appear any better than you really are 
Vanity is ever with virtue at war. Then never boast of having done your duty, for modesty to a kind heart lends beauty. But now you must each your voice give, who deserves my diamond to receive. But just then a neighbor's chicken came and said, You know who I am, I'm the same who thinks it is the nicest fun to tease and fight whenever i can i especially like to plague tis a naughty whim your good little dick whenever i meet him last night i saw him and flew on his head and knocked him down when he gently said it would be an easy thing for me to do the same thing unto thee but this would not please the father above who bids us for evil return deeds of love to-day as i lay fast asleep by a tree a hornet alighted and would have stung me but your dick observed the danger and flew to the place where i was to my rescue grandpa's heart was filled beyond measure this gives me the greatest pleasure my dear dick he said there are but few who such generous and noble deeds would do you tried to keep heaven from us your merit and from your enemy we had to learn it to return good for evil forgive our foe is the noblest action that one can do i therefore without hesitation proclaim all my declaration the diamond is yours and though dazzling and clear it shines not so bright as your action my dear and i hope it ever will recall to you that there is nothing that we in secret do but what some time or other it will be known for every one reaps what he has sown you all well began and i hope will continue to follow the path which is trodden by few for though hard the conquest of passions and ease its certain reward is happiness and peace End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chapter 25 of The Tale and Adventures of Chanticleer, The Intelligent Rooster, an interesting story in verse for children by unknown, translated by Louise Pollock, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen vancouver b c thus age had crowned him wise and good and round him gathered a very large brood of grandchildren in feathers bright peeping and chirping with delight he taught them all to seek the truth and gather knowledge in their youth to be industrious gentle kind and all their parents counsel mind that they in future years might be good members of society so great his wisdom each one prayed that death from him might long be stayed but on one sultry summer day when lowering clouds hung dark and gray and lightning flashed with frightful glare and thunder peals smote on the air threatening the while in angry strain to deluge all the earth with rain some little chicks from home did stray but where they'd gone no one could say so grandpa with anxious care began to search round everywhere until he'd found them one and all and brought them to their mother's stall but by running fast and getting wet a hard fever in his blood was set which made him very weak and ill 
and notwithstanding doctor's skill and all the care that love can give twas found too soon he could not live and when ten painful days were past he calmly gently breathed his last the sad news spread both far and near and all the friends of chanticleer came now to look a last adieu on one whose virtues all of them knew from morn till night in crowds they stood lamenting loud that one so good so wise and just so great and brave must now be buried in the grave the funeral came from far and near crowds came to honor chanticleer and do for him the last sad rite do those that pass from mortal sight and twas a novel scene to view each morning hen and rooster too were clothed in black from top to toe this you'd have liked to see i know the slowly moving lengthened train sang funeral hymns in solemn strain and tears bedimmed each mourner's eye till not a single one was dry how deep must be the sense of woe when rooster's tears can freely flow and grave old hens with moistened eye can just like children sob and cry and in the train besides relations were birds of different ranks and stations who came to pay the honor due to chant to clear the wise and true peacocks their gorgeous plumes displayed and geese in sober gray arrayed and troops of swans in spotless white and files of ravens black as night all came to show how large a part he'd filled in every mourner's heart at length they reached the quiet spot where was the family burying lot when all commenced to sob anew and make a very gray adieu it almost seemed as if they'd try to see which could the loudest cry the sexton draped in a long black gown then slowly let the coffin down then flapped his wings with solemn air and thus addressed the mourners there my friends he said tis sad i know to lose a friend you found it so with grateful hearts then let us cherish his noble deeds they cannot perish to honor him his counsels heed your services he does not need but he can still serve you how i'll tell by the noble life which he lived so well and slowly now they all walked home to the different places whence they'd come and when the family were alone the oldest son bade them be done with crying which availed them not i feel as deeply as i ought the heavy loss we've all sustained but fruitless grief must be restrained in our father's death which all deplore a friend has left this changing shore for wisdom renowned for virtues esteemed for goodness of heart unequalled it seemed who has left us his life as a legacy rare let us all strive to follow his example so fair so that death when he comes as he comes to all shall find each prepared to answer the call here ends my history children dear of that wonderful rooster chanticleer whether you'll see his like i doubt but should it ever come about that you of a wonderful rooster here he must be a descendant of chanticleer 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of the life and adventures of Chanticleer, the intelligent rooster. An interesting story in verse for children by unknown. Translated by Louise Pollock.